first thing we looked at was point values. A uh, couple things. Uh, one, looking at the field. Check this out. The 10 point and 20 point zones, absolutely necessary. You have to put the movable base in there. Second off, these sparking bonuses, two points, useless. Don't even worry about them. Uh, and the, uh, these, these uh, non movable goals, you can put them on, but they're not the craziest, most important thing in the world. So, based on the max score you can get, uh, you should only have to take 48 cones or more. That means that each movable base has to have around 14 to 15 cones to comfortably fit it. Um, once you have 14 or 15 on them, stacking them in, in the in the 10 point zone is really, really, really tricky. If you have 15, like this, and it gets really tippy at the top. So what we're doing is we're gonna have a little bar that pulls up over and drops in without the wheels having to go up over. In the 20 point zone, you do have to know that. So that just means you have to lower your cone stack height um, and deal with that another way. What is that? Is that something you built at your house? <laughs> All right, so currently uh, it is 4.33, and uh, this is our robot right now. Do you like this noise? Uh, Joseph, what do you have to say about this being our robot? Uh, <laughs> at 4.33 p.m. on the first day. It's, it's, it's pretty good. We, um, we spent a lot of time to get the, the path that the mobile goal takes from the Ford bringing it into our robot just right, so that it brings it in to our robot where we want it, and then it can reach out and place it down where we want it. In order to drop the goal entirely on the other side of the pipe, like we were planning on originally, it requires a four bar that's pretty long, about 15 holes. We decided that that was too long, so what we're going to do instead is drop the goal slightly halfway over the edge of the pipe and just let it slide down. All right, so we've been working on this elevator lift um, using these sliders with a bunch of rollers like inside and outside on every side. And basically the idea is you get a really, really low friction slider and then you have several of them. Um, and then at the top you can have even lighter a slider with, um, with a shaft and then little rollers inside. Um, the only issue with this one is that Vex doesn't actually sell 18 inch shafts, so the stage has to be quite short. And then the issue that we just realized with this is that um, you can't really fit them as many stages just because this stage has to both have something wrapped around it by one stage behind it and the stage in front of it. So the only way to do that is stand, a stand off a bunch of them away from each other, but then you lose three inches of height per stage and all of them have to be really short. Aiden's working on the second stage of the roller. That's actually the fourth. Uh, fourth. Meanwhile, you know, Aaron is uh, <laughs> doing what he's been doing the entire time, which is nothing. Aaron, how many screws do you think you put in? At least Are we four. Are we including before or after the hour start? <laughs> four and a half, if you average. So the first lift we looked at was the elevator lift. This was our go-to lift. Uh, so we decided to, in order to get the cones over from the intake over to the movable base, we'd either have to tilt the movable base, tilt the lift, or slide the base underneath the lift. So we've got an elevator lift here with three stages. And uh, if you put a chain bar at the top stage, you can intake on the ground when you raise the lift you get extra height from the chain bar. The downside to using it is that we have to put a motor on the elevator lift, and we really want to avoid putting weight up that high. The second lift we looked at was a reverse double four bar. This is kind of the most popular lift right now. Reason why we aren't using it is because it's so heavy. You're lifting so much metal compared to actually lifting the cone. 
The cone's super lightweight and the reversible four bar is just super, super, super heavy. You get the cone over to the base by either putting a chain bar on top or by uh, tilting the reversible four bar, which sucks. So the third and final design we, we decided to use was a chain bar. So we one time expand up and we just spin a chain around with an intake on it. The benefit to that is, is we're almost lifting no weight whatsoever. So the motors can be as fast as possible and we can just process the cones as fast as, as we can. <laughs> Go. I don't want to talk. You should do voiceover. Talk. It's less awkward that way. Talk. <laughs> Cam, your voiceover was so good last year, you need to do it again. After seeing the size of these, we decided that it wouldn't really be possible. <laughs> Making fun of me? <laughs> we decided to go with the simple, lightweight, six wheel, one to 2.4 gear ratio drive base. So everyone's got a, apparently a video yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, how, <laughs> of how I speak. In uh, Robot in Three Days. You speak like Leland in Robot in Three Days. You want to show me, Aaron? It's connecting. <laughs> Is our custom on your side mechanism? It allowed us to expand over 40 inches, and to build this, we used C channels. <laughs> yeah, the band is really tight. What are you doing right now, Aaron? Uh, currently, I'm rebuilding the locks for the yeah. extending chain. <laughs> so, where's that other piece? These guys are gonna overlap with a piece of polycarbonate in between, and then there's gonna be holes drilled out in the polycarb, and this piece is gonna sit on there like that, and be tensioned in. Uh, so when this guy slides and lines up with the holes, this piece will shoot through the holes and lock uh, yeah, I designed a lock and spent like 10 hours on it, and now it doesn't work. <laughs> we have Great. one working prototype. Yeah, there's one on this side. So it works, it works every time. Yeah, so you just gotta get one on the other side. And then two up here. Uh, yep. Yeah. So that's where we are uh, at 9 o'clock on day two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here are the intakes that we built um, throughout the uh, three days. So there are two types of intakes that we built. Some for like intaking the cone when it's vertical. So like this. Here's one example. This is trash. Uh, this, which is like a super like highly optimized uh, um, kind of pincher. So it goes in and it grabs. Um, the trick with this is, is that you have these little pads that roll and the weights kind of hold them down so that you can intake it both like this and when the cone is flipped over like this, I can intake like that and the pads will roll it so it can go up. So this intake is really good. We're probably going to use this in the future. Um, we also had some of these for intaking them when they're upside down so they work like the cone's upside down like this, it can come up over and intake and lift it, and same with this. So this can come over and then kind of center it. So those are the intakes for this. This is the ripper uh, <laughs> test number three. three All right. Two, one, let rip. <laughs> oh, hell no. All right, so uh, here's what we have right now. We're trying to keep the cone stable, so go up. Yeah, it's like it. And then this part is yeah. really <laughs> sketchy. It's really yeah. that's even really <laughs> sketchy. And then, wait, there. It was at this point where we realized that we should flip the cone instead of keeping it flat. So I was like planning out the <laughs> yeah. side intake, okay? So you bring out exactly what happened. You're gonna <laughs> grab it over yeah, here. Yeah, so Aaron, <laughs> and then Aaron says one Aaron, slide Aaron's up, one. And then he does this. And we're like, and we're like oh, okay. That's what we're gonna do now for the auto loader. So now we're looking up if it's actually legal to load like this. Miles, look it up. <laughs> not looking it up. Miles. This guy's useless. This guy's <laughs> hey, I'm not useless. So it's like four o'clock in the morning or something. Three. Three. Something great. Here's test uh, number one of our brand new intake idea. The the brand it's new It's passive, so the idea is, is it can completely release and it doesn't matter. Say what? Let All right. Let her rip. <laughs> 
up. Let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got this forklift style intake on the front of the robot and the goal is to orient the cone upside down so that when this guy rains down from above and uh, grabs it like this, it'll be in the right position. So you can either get the cone from this direction or from this direction and goes in between those two prongs, lifts up, and the cone falls into position. Same thing for this orientation. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> That is the sickest <laughs> deploy I've ever seen. Yeah. Holy oh, shit. Oh man. That is so mm -hmm. badass. So uh, it's what like five. It's uh, six oh eight a.m. on the last day. We have like two and a half, three more hours before it's over. That was our very first deploy. We just got everything done. Uh, it's a pretty ridiculous. I think we're. It's just Aaron and me now. Yeah. The rest of the gang the left. The dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the gang left us with the robot. It's pretty much in its finished form here. Um, three hours before it's finished, we were just struggling with the lift deploy, but we just got it. So that's pretty awesome. So now it's going to be on to a shooting a reveal video. So I've decided to do a little write up on some of our decisions if you're wondering. Um, I described everything a little bit more in detail so you can find the link to that in the description. Uh, and as well, humongous thanks to George and Joseph at Rolling Robots. We could have not done this without them. Um, they, they did everything for us. So if you want to see one of the best robotics academies in California, check out their link below. Please, please, please visit their website. Thanks.